Looking into the woods to the south, you catch a glimpse of how this land used to be. 12,000 years ago, nomadic peoples walked this land, as did animals such as the woolly mammoth. The trees and plants you now see came to this area within the last 3,000 years, as did its first permanent residence. Nestled in the area around you sat a village of American Indians, this land's longest occupants. Using the land properly, they thrived here for many generations. We return thanks to our mother the earth, which sustains us. We return thanks to the rivers and streams, which supply us with water. We return thanks to all herbs, which furnish medicines for the cure of our diseases. By the time Europeans arrived in this area, the land on which you stand was the home of the Piscataway people. Changes soon came to this land, whether wanted by the Piscataways or not. European expansion rarely considered the desires and needs of native peoples. The native aspects of the land began to disappear in the face of the European onslaught. In 1696, the whole area was named Prince George's County. Evidence of native life was rapidly disappearing. European settlers continued to expand through Maryland, moving into this land and as a result, pushing out the Piscataways and other tribes. The earliest European owner of this property was Colonel John Addison. Upon his death in 1705, Colonel Addison owned some 6,500 acres of land, which is over 10 square miles. Members of Addison's family owned the property for several generations, naming it Oxen Hill Manor. Tobacco was among the earliest crops grown on this land. Tobacco farming was wildly popular in this part of Maryland. Tobacco leaves became so valuable that, for a time, they could be traded and used as currency. Prince George's County was the leading producer of tobacco in Maryland by the mid-18th century. Alan Verta, a Prince George's County historian, observed, Tobacco created wealth for Prince George's County, wealth that built fine plantation homes, educated the children of the leading families, and supported the work of our religious faith. That one crop contributed more to Prince George's County than anything else. After generations of successful ownership, Walter Delaney Addison, a descendant of the first owner, sold part of the land to Nicholas Lingen of Georgetown. It was this piece of property that is now Oxen Cove Park. Mr. Lingen improved the land, but by the turn of the 19th century, he too sold it. The new owner was Dr. Samuel de Butts, who along with his wife Mary are the next residents we shall meet. Proceed down the road to your next marker at a small octagonal building surrounded by a white picket fence and stand of old boxwood.